guys, welcome to Fantasy Tip. This is Max for the week 14 Ad Player Weekend video. I am taking over for Julian this week and I hope I do half as much of a good job as he normally does. Now to start off, we have only one team that plays on Friday and Sunday and that is the Winnipeg Jets. I'll go over them a little bit later. Uh, to start off the Friday and Saturday section of the video, there is three teams this week. The New Jersey Devils, the Pittsburgh Penguins, and the Edmonton Oilers. There's one thing these three teams have in common, is they have two of the best centers in the league. We're talking about Connor McDavid, Leon Dreisaitl, Sidney Crosby, Yevgeny Malkin, Jack Hughes, and Nico Hischier. So you would be good to monitor the wingers on the weekend if there are any line changes. So keep a close eye on that because players who normally play with these centermen end up on the score sheet. To start off the list, we start with a fantasy tipped regular, uh, Thomas Tatar. He's got two goals, six assists, eight points in the last eight games. He's only owned at 11%, plays on the top line with Nico Hischier and Jesper Bratt recently, also top power play line, a solid ad. We have Jason Zucker, who's compiled three goals, one assist, four points in eight games since he came back. 26 hits and two power play points. Plays with Yevgeny Malkin. We also have Andre Palat, another player coming back from injuries. In two games, he hasn't gotten on the score sheet yet, but he's compiled four shots, five hits, and three blocks in two games. I think it's only a matter of time until he's back on the score sheet. Dawson Mercer is a another player at the moment of recording this video. He's playing second line minutes with Jack Hughes. And if you know me by now, you know that any winger that plays with Jack Hughes is worth a look. We also have Brian Rust playing with Sidney Crosby and Jake Wenzel on the first line. Also plays second power play. There's not much more to say apart that he could explode at any moment if the line decides to get hot. We have Rickard Raquel that's playing on the second Pittsburgh Penguin line, but on the first power play. Pick your poison between the two Penguin wingers. And finally, we have Kaylor Yamamoto and Klim Kostin, both at 3% owned. At the moment, they are both Connor McDavid's line mates. And keep a close eye on those wingers because they get shuffled a lot. Maybe by the weekend, one of the two will be downgraded to fourth line. Uh, Klim Kostin is a big bodied forward that didn't pan out in St. Louis. Uh, hockey wise, I've been a big fan since he got drafted. Uh, he's a guy who's got a lot of dog in his game and I'm quite happy to see that he's getting an opportunity alongside the best player on the planet. Let's hop on to the Friday and Sunday games. The only team playing, the Winnipeg Jets. We start off with Blake Wheeler, of course. No peripheral Blake. He was back from IR and he plays on the line with Mark Shifley and Cole Perfetti. He is the best option right now if you're looking strictly for points and power play. He is the man to choose. Uh, we also have Adam Lowry, different type of player, gives you face-offs, gives you hits, shorthanded usage, second power play center. I love Adam Lowry on the wire. Um, Cole Perfetti, he completes Shifley and Wheeler on the second line, but he's probably the biggest boomer bust option on this list. Thread carefully, he's got 6 goals, 14 assists, 20 points in 35 games. We also have Neil Pionk. A goal, two assists, three points in the last four games. I love me some Pionk with consistent shots, hits, blocks. He gives a little bit of everything and he has the occasional point streak. Brendan Dillon is another guy who's got a goal, two assists in the last four games. 12 points plus five on the season, 103 hits, makes him a decent option for the weekend. Nate Schmidt just came back and he hasn't done much since. He's a capable depth player. Uh, only acquire him if the guys on top aren't available. And for deeper leagues, 
I added Morgan Barron. He's got two goals in the last two games, five shots, three hits, and one block. This, once again, this is for very deep leagues only. And I would drop him the moment I wake up on Monday morning. Now we're on to the Saturday and Sunday portion of the video. There is a little more offensive potential here. We got teams like the Carolina Hurricanes, the Arizona Coyotes, the Montreal Canadiens, and the Vancouver Canucks. To start off the list, we start with Max Pacioretty. Two goals in two games since he got back from injuries. Eight shots, only 65% rostered. This guy is a league winner. I'm all in on patches. I know the term league winner gets thrown around like old socks. But seriously, this guy is the real deal. And he plays on the Carolina Hurricanes who have phenomenal depth. Sebastian Ajo, Tirvo Teravainen, Andrei Sveshnikov, Martin Nikash. No matter where Pacioretty ends up in the lineup, he will play with quality players. Right under, we have Nick Schmaltz. I normally stay completely clear of Arizona Coyotes players that do not do any peripherals due to their negative output in the differential. But Schmaltz makes a great case for himself here. And he could be the ad of the week. He's got three goals, six assists, nine points in the past 10, including four power play points. It's worth noting that he's a minus six in the past four games, though. Seth Jarvis still on the first line with Sebastian Ajo and Max Pacioretty. Uh, he's been a bit cold lately, but he's still in a great spot. Nick Bjugstad is a streaky player. Uh, he had three goals, two assists, five points in the last four games prior to going pointless in the last three. He could get hot again this weekend on the second line with Kraus and Dylan Gwenter. Bjugstad plays a prominent role with the Coyotes. The coaches trust him. And he's, he's a good plug-in for the weekend. You can tap in his lineman Lawson Kraus here. Uh, very consistent in shots, hits, occasional hot splurges where he's everywhere on the score sheet. Lawson Kraus is up to 14 goals, 8 assists, 22 points this year and could be a good add. Kirby Dak is still on the first line with Nick Suzuki and Cole Cofield, which makes him a very decent option as a streamer. It's worth noting he only has a goal and an assist in the past nine, a little bit on a cold streak, which could change this weekend. Uh, Tirvo Teravainen is now on the fourth line of the Hurricanes, but he still has a modest three goals, four assists, seven points in the last 11. He hasn't lost his top power play spot. And if he moves up the lineup by the weekend, his stock will be much higher. Barrett Hayton is the first line center of the Coyotes and also plays power play one. A lot of people call him a bust. But I haven't given up on him. I think he'll turn out to be a late bloomer. Especially if Arizona gets Connor Bedal, Adam Fantilli, or another solid center, Barrett Aiton could bloom into an excellent second line center in the next few years. For now, he's got two goals, five assists, seven points in the last six, and you could decide to ride the hot streak this week. Paul Stashny is a guy beating time. He's playing between Andrei Zveshnikov and Martin Nikash right now. He's got a goal, five assists, six points in the last seven, also in a great spot. Nick Ritchie has compiled 27 hits and three points in the last six games. He has 17 points on the season. He's a good big winger. Uh, Josh Anderson has three goals in the last six games. Joel Armia has three goals, six shots, four hits and three blocks in 2023. Uh, he's a 0% rostered player that is worth monitoring right now. He's been doing very well since the New Year's. Jonathan Drouin, three points in the last six games. If the Habs keeps losing, line changes will occur soon. Uh, deeper league worth monitoring. He doesn't play much recently, but he could end up in the top six soon enough. And finally, I have Stefan Noisen right now, who's day-to-day. -day. 
but four goals, three assists, seven points in the last nine games, all on the fourth line, plays second power play unit, uh, one of the most relevant fourth liners in the league. On to defensemen now. First, Shane Gostis Bear. Ghost is scoreless in the last five games, but at 22 minutes and plus per game and power play usage, he could get back on the score sheet in the back-to-back -back this weekend. Brett PC, another guy who's got six assists in the last seven games, he's worth a look. Uh, Neil Pionk, as stated previously, good all-around guy who can also produce points. We love some Pionks here. Uh, Vince Dunn snuck in on my list with only one game this weekend, but he's been so good recently and the Kraken's offense seem unstoppable by times that I couldn't not put him in the video. He's got three goals, seven assists, 10 points in the last six games, and he's a whooping plus 11. Right under we have Evan Bouchard. I feel like Bouchard can be a top 20 defenseman one day, uh, whether real NHL or fantasy. The problem is he's still young and he goes on long, cold offensive streaks and his peripherals aren't there yet. Still, he plays on the Edmonton Oilers and the production could come this weekend with matchups at San Jose and Vegas. Brady Shea has three points in the last two games at the moment of recording this video, worth a look. Oliver Ekman Larson has three points in the last three games, plays second pairing on Vancouver and second power play unit. Jeff Petrie, keep an eye on him. He could be back this week and he could be the steal of the week. If he's available in your league, don't waste any time. This guy produces hits, blocks, he isn't scared to shoot the puck. And with Chris Letan out, Jeff Petrie would be the number one defenseman on that Penguins roster. And finally, to conclude the defenseman list, I added Ryan Graves. Graves has two assists in four games since he's been back. He added seven shots, five hits, and seven blocks. For the goaltending situation this weekend, we don't have a lot of options. So I would suggest to jump on Kachetkov as soon as possible if you're having goaltending problem. Both Carolina Hurricanes game this weekend are played at home, which is very important to me when I stream goaltenders. Uh, Kachetkov is owned at 63% and he will either play against Pittsburgh or Vancouver on home ice. Whatever game he doesn't get, Antti Ranta gets the other. I think both of these guys are in a better position than the other guys on this list. Unfortunately, if those players are already taken, you'd have to throw a toonie on a Vancouver Canucks goalie who are both playing abysmal matchups at Florida and at Carolina. So Spencer Martin and Colin Delia are not the greatest option, but we are limited. I like the Vancouver goalies more than I like the Arizona Coyotes goaltending duo of Vejmelka and Ingram. I was expecting a better outing from Vejmelka this season. And finally, keep a close eye on David Riddich because the Winnipeg Jets are not playing a back-to-back -back Saturday, Sunday. They're playing Friday and Sunday. So Connor Ellibuck might end up starting both games, but it's worth monitoring David Riddich because he could be the key to saving your goaltending statistics on Sunday. Now on to the shooting category. Of course, in first place, Max Pacioretty again. Uh, only a two-game sample where he averages four shots a game, but we already know that number's not going to go down drastically. He's a shooting machine. Uh, right under Brian Rust and Ricard Raquel that are being fed by Sidney Crosby and Yevgeny Malkin, respectively. We also have Seth Jarvis playing with Patches and Ajo. Uh, Miles Wood is a great shooter on the New Jersey Devils. Uh, Josh Anderson has scored three goals in his last 14 shots, a guy to monitor. Dawson Mercer also has 76 shots on the season, but playing with Jack Hughes might get him more room and more opportunities to shoot and to score. 
Uh, Brady Shea has 18 shots in the past six games. And finally, Mikael Backlund has 39 shots in the last nine games, uh, which is why he makes the ranking, even though he only plays one game this weekend. For the block categories, uh, on top, I have a couple of Montreal Canadiens, uh, David Savard and Joel Edmondson. The Canadians should be getting a lot of shots against once again this weekend. And I wouldn't want anybody other than David Savard if I was chasing the block categories. They're both averaging 2.5 and 2.4 blocks per game. I expect that number to go a little higher by the end of the season. Marcus Pedersen right under at 1.9 blocks per game. We have two Devils in Jonas Siegenthaler and Ryan Graves. They're both averaging 1.8, 1.6 blocks per game. Uh, Brett PC is a decent streaming option, averages 1.6 blocks per game. And finally, Brian Dumoulin owned at 1%, who averages 1.9 block shot per game. For the hit category, we have one of the great hitters of the league playing two games this weekend. Who else but Luke Shen? I am currently playing against Luke Shen, who is owned by Julian Ragosta, and it's always a headache for hit categories. After Luke Shen, we have Arberg Jekai, who averages 2.9 hits a game, only owned at 27%. Once again, a great ad for category leagues this weekend. We have Jack McBain, who averages 3.2 hits a game and ranks 8th in the entire NHL for that category. Uh, most likely, you'll find him on the waiver wire. So if you're chasing the hits, Jack McBain is a, a sure value for the weekend. Brendan Dillon averages 2.5 hits a game. Uh, not bad of a streamer. Jason Zucker. Uh, listen, Jason Zucker can shoot, he can hit, he can produce points. He already has 100 hits this season, which averages 2.9 per game. I'm not sure about that, but I'm pretty sure that he must be nearing career heights for hits per game this year. Nick Ritchie averages 2.8 hits a game, not a bad streamer. And finally, for deeper leagues, or if you're really in need of hits and are already dominating the other categories, we've got guys like Curtis Lazar and Liam O'Brien. Curtis Lazar averages 3.4 hits a game, which is not bad. And Liam O'Brien's been out for a couple weeks now, but he averages 3.6 hits a game when he plays. Keep a close eye on him if you're chasing the hit categories to see if he'll be back in the line. For face-offs now, we obviously have Jordan Stahl at number one. He's one of the NHL's greats for face-offs. He averages 9.6 face-offs one per game, and he has two games this weekend. He only is 11% rostered. So if you're chasing the face-off categories, of course, he's the top guy to aim for the weekend. Uh, Christian Dvorak averages 7.2 face-offs per game, only 1% owned. Our boy Adam Lowry at 11% owned, 7.5 face-offs per game. Uh, I added Barrett Hayton pretty high on the list, but he only averages 5.8 face-offs one on the season but he plays first line and he plays first power play so if there's a game with a lot of interruption I think he's gonna get a lot of opportunities to boost that number this weekend Eric Halla is back at center he's playing on the third line right now and averages 7.5 face-offs a game uh, we have Jeff Carter also on the third line but for Pittsburgh he averages 7.2 uh, Nick Bjugstad, 7.2 face-offs per game, second line on Arizona, not a bad pick. And we also have Jake Evans, who's averaging 6.1 per game. I also added Philip Dano on this list, even though he only plays one game this weekend. Because he can hit you with a 12 to 16 face-offs one in one game which could end up being better than any other center on this list, even if you culminate both of their games. So Philip Dano is a reach for one game, 
But like I said, he's a big boom option for the face-off category. And at number 10, we have Michael McLeod, the New Jersey Devils' fourth-line center, who still averages 7.1 face-offs per game. To conclude, I'm going to leave you guys with a couple of guys who got my attention. First off, Travis Konechny, rostered at 80% right now. This is really for shallow leagues. Uh, he's on fire. 10 goals, 9 assists, 19 points in the last 12 games, and points in 11 of those 12 games. Super solid option. Might not keep it up at that rhythm until the end of the year, but it's good to know. Apart from that, we have Daniel Sprong, who has 7 goals, 3 assists, 10 points in the last 11 games on the Seattle Kraken's fourth line. Uh, his ice time has increased significantly in the last three games. Apart from that, in my last video, I made a little joke when I was talking about Yanni Gord. Uh, I was saying that he was playing with Fantasy's number one ranked player after day one, Ily Tolvanen and Oliver Bjorkstrand. Well, Tolvanen is up to three goals, two assists, five points in his first five games with the Kraken. Add 10 shots, seven hits, and five blocks to that total. For a third line forward, this might end up being a big Nashville Predators mistake. And players who joined the Kraken seem to bloom. Listen, uh, Tolvanen, Bjorkstrand, and Gord could be one of the better third lines of the NHL if they stick it together. And they're not rostered at a very, very high number. So keep an eye on the Kraken because they seem unstoppable recently. On another note, Austin Matthews became the fastest Toronto Maple Leaf to get the 500 points and Connor McDavid became the fifth fastest player to get the 500 assists in the entire NHL history. Thank you so much for watching guys. Click the like and subscribe button. I hope you guys get some W's this week and I hope you have a fantastic weekend. I'll see you guys soon. Thank you very much.